What is happening guys, Sia here and we have another rebuild today and today we are taking on Hamburg. We've already done a rebuild of Hertha Berlin who beat Hamburg in the playoff relegation final last season. So obviously Hamburg are condemned to another season in the second Bundesliga. They have won the Bundesliga six times and beat Juventus 1-0 in 83 to win the European trophy. They have got quite a strong squad, which means the first season is all about getting back into the Bundesliga. So with that in mind, I didn't make any transfers. I'd like to get straight to the end of the first season and see how we got on. So here we are. And as you can see, we walked 11 points at the top of the league, really showing how dominant this squad is. And that last year, they were very unlucky not to go straight up, obviously. Obviously, Schalke and Werder Bremen going up ahead of these guys. But what a season it has been. Let's have a quick look at the squad. As you can see, we've actually got into the next season now. We will have to look at the kind of historic kind of nature of this. The tactic we're using is the Gasparini 3-4-1-2. I will put a link down below for this formation. As you can see, it's an attacking mentality. Short of passing, run at defence, be more expressive with a higher tempo, put out a defence and work the ball into the box. Kick short kicks, distribute the centre-backs, then counter and counter press. Then out of possession, offside trap with a high defensive line, a high line of engagement, and then trigger that press much more often. These are the lads that basically prompt us home here. We have Fagnerman on the right. He's a very, very good youngster, very good right back. He'll probably be in for the far but unless we manage to get a ridiculous right back instead of him. We have Glatzel, greatest man that he's made. He's made no German of interest, which is mad to me. 28 years of age, he is a consistent goal scorer in here. He had 51 games at Cardiff, didn't do too well, but Robert Glatzel is kind of a, a hero at Hamburg in this save. We have Sonny Kittel, a back in midfielder, 80 appearances, 28 goals. Last season, he got eight goals, a rating of 7.26. And this formation seems to be doing us very, very well. If you have a look at some of the results, we have smashed some teams. 2-0 Dusseldorf, 6-0 Babelsberg, 3-1, 7-0 against Magdeburg is ridiculous considering they're in the same division as us. 3-1 uh, hands of Rostock, 4-0 against St. Pauli, a very good team there. 6-2 against Darmstadt, 4-0 against Holston Kiel. As you can see, we have lost some games. Paderborn, we lost Dusseldorf 3-2, 2-0 against Regensburg. Sandhausen, 3-1. Magdeburg beat us 2-1, which given the air, uh, the thrashing they got last time, it's a bit a bit of shock really, isn't that they managed to do that. But it's fine. We had a very strong end of the season. A nice three wins and a draw to finish off that season. Paderborn beating us twice, which is ridiculous. But overall, all we did was go up, which is all we needed to do, which puts us into the big division, the Bundesliga. I mean, it's another second division trophy for them. And let's have a quick look at where we are expected to finish going into the next season. We've got a season preview. We are expected to finish 15th, which I do believe is just safe. So, that is the target, to be just safe. But, with that, let's get straight into the second season, see how we got on, and see who we brought in. So, the second season, and we miss out on Europe by two points to Wolfsburg, which is ridiculous. I mean, look, the same with Mainz as well. So, two teams that should have probably gone to Europe. I imagine there's some points we've dropped. But Borussia Mönchengladbach in 16th is a ridiculous thing to see. Have a look at the competitions before we go any further. You can see we knocked out in the second round by Bayern Munich in the DFB Pokal. But the interesting bit is who have we brought in this season? And as you can see, uh, not a lot. <laughs> it's, I can say, it's, it's disgustingly difficult to find players on this. Really struggling to bring anybody in at all. If you look who went, Vuskovic went to Antwerp. He made 27 appearances last season. A defender, we got him 1.2 mil for him. Miro Milhem, he's a left back. He was used sparingly last season. We had some injuries, but I've managed to bring in another one called Fabian Nuremberger, who we'll have a look at in a minute. For £1.4 million, I wasn't complaining at him. Laszlo Benez, he was a very, very strong midfielder, 25 years of age. I mean, he's Slovakian. But I think there was a better German option who we brought in from Union Berlin, who has Bundesliga experience and can really, you know, he can help the squad progress a lot more. And then Xavier Amechi, a winger who obviously we aren't using wingers in our formation, but he is not needed. We got £1.7 million for him. He's at Burrett. I mean, is he doing well? 40 appearances and one goal. He's not. No, he's not. 
But the interesting bit is who we brought in. And for £2 million, the left back, Fabian Nuremberger from, from Nuremberg. And 23 years of age, plenty of potential going forward. Probably will get into that, that uh, German national team if he keeps putting in performances as he is for us. He made 29 appearances this season. And, you know, it was nice to see him. I think he's had a lot of injuries, which is what's really restricted his time playing him a month out there for one injury. But, I mean, his work rate 14, passing 12, technique 14, first touch 12. His crossing does need to improve with playing this Gasparini 3 4 1 2. But, you know, if he keeps getting game time, hopefully that will improve because he is something he's doing on a regular basis. Next up, we have Rani Kadira. This is the man. Who replaced the other midfielder? This is the man who replaced Benez. Laszlo Benez is gone and coming is Rani Kedira. I can't believe how good this man is and I have never heard of him before. Um, physicals, nice, apart from his agility. Work rate 17, teamwork 17, vision 11, pa tackling 14, passing 12 and marking 13. With that kind of defensive mid roll, you can see he's playing box to box midfielder here. But he will get about, his work rate will put him about there. It's a shame that his, his shooting isn't as good as I would like. Obviously, long shots, it's, 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 it's a sacrifice I was willing to make to have someone that will get up and down and can break the play up, which is what is what is vital for this formation. But next up, we have Mario Vuskovic. Obviously, he, we, got it, we got sold him. I was trying to get a defender in. The issue was is that I tried to get him out and bring someone in. And they offered a loan back, so I was like, I accept it. And if I get someone in, I get someone in, but... Didn't manage to actually find anybody to come in there. But next up, we have Sally Oskan from Borussia Dortmund. He is German, 25 years of age, 15 under 21 caps. He is a very strong player. He hasn't got the game time he probably wanted this year. Hopefully next year he can really progress on. But it's hard. It's hard when you're in the Bundesliga. You can only sign a certain standard of player. But if you look at the appearances, 36 for Glatzel and Ambrosius. Goal-wise, we have 14 from Vince Hemmer, 11 from Kittle with 11 assists, and 11 from Glatzel. So, goals this season are very hard to come by. You see, Nuremberger there has 6 of 31. So, he's joint second. So, his crossing isn't the best, but he's still getting those assists. If you look at the schedule, you can see 6-2 to Bayern Munich. They're knocked us out. I mean, it's a horrible game to get in his second leg. But the first month in the Bundesliga was a real trial by fire. I mean, we destroyed Bochum. And then, you know, we really struggled to get any more results. That 3-1 uh, pulled back, 2-1 calm. We really struggled to get some results in this month. So, to bounce back after that Bayern Munich 6-2 and win 4-1 against Hertha Berlin, who obviously beat them two years ago in this game, to get promoted. 1-0 against Dortmund, a 3-2 loss there. A 2-2 draw against Bayern Munich. We did seem to find our feet before succumbing to a 7-0. Absolute drubbing at the hands of Bayer Leverkusen. And I think if we keep going down, there'll be a five-one there, a six-nil here. You know, it's difficult to it's difficult to get a run of form when you do end up getting battered eventually, which is a little bit disappointing. Let's have a look at the Bundesliga. Are we in any of these top? I mean, Kittle's there obviously with eleven assists. Thirty-year-old Kittle probably I'll have to move on soon. Have to get someone in that is a bit younger to really progress on with that. But average rating, Ambrosius with seven point two. And Rani Kadira, the new signing, with a 7.19, which is nice to see. In goals, we may struggle. We have Vitzheimer here, sorry, in 12. Kittle on 11. Other than that, we have nobody that is really banging in the goals for us. So we have no European football going ahead, which means that the money will probably be worse and we had to bring in players. So looking at season three, I don't know what to expect, but let's see if we bring in and let's see how we can get on. The end of season three, and we are in the Champions League. Um, once again, incredibly difficult to sign players, but you know, eight points clear into the Champions League spot with Munich, Leipzig, and Dortmund. It is nice to see a lot of progress. Because during the last time, we were two points away from seventh. So to really take over that and get fourth place is absolutely massive. Let's jump into the transfers and see who we brought in. And as you can see, we have done a lot of business in this window. People that left, Kittle left on a free. Could not agree a contract for Kittle. He went to Montpellier on free, and then he went to Sao Paulo on a loan. So obviously, in France, it has not worked out for him. Next up was Maximilian Roja, a defensive mid. Never going to be good enough to play for the first team. So obviously, with Gruffert, he is getting a little game time. So that is nice. Bakary Jack went to Wolfsburg. Another winger we will not be using. He played a lot of games for us, but 
obviously that was before I took over. But then that brings us the interesting bit, which is players we have signed. And first up, Fiat Arp, a player that I've actually signed a lot of times on this game. He turns out to be a very, very strong player, despite looking not the best. Decent physicals, good work rate, good finishing and first touch. He is capable of getting the ball in the back of the net. And he's proved that this season with 17 goals in 34 appearances. Coming from Holston Keel in the second division, where to be honest, he hasn't done that well. Um, when I saw him, I really wanted to give him a go, and it was a massive risk, but he has really, really paid off for us. Leonardo Barrero coming from Mainz, obviously Premier Obviously, Bundesliga your experience. Very, very good in the middle of the park. You'll see where he fits into that squad in a minute. We have Aaron Molinas. Obviously, Kittle went. We needed a new attacking midfielder, and this man fit the bill. 15 goals and 33 appearances with seven assists from Boca Juniors. I mean, he's still only young. He's 23 years of age. We can easily make a profit on him. It does kind of go into the buying and selling aspect of this. Next up, we have 26-year-old Saul Sacido from Olympia. I mean, heading 16, marking 14, tackling 15. It's worth it could be better. Position is very, very good, and he is a very strong, quick individual. 26 years of age. I mean, he's from Paraguay. And it's nice to have these players that I've never actually got before. But when I found this guy here at Schalke, Leo Griemel, another ridiculous centre mid, played 59 times in two seasons for Schalke. But for £2.7 million, pounds, I've noticed this German players are dirt cheap. I mean, he's probably not even German. He's he's Austrian. These, are, these players in this division are dirt cheap. And for him to come in, and obviously, his stats are only increasing. He will sell for a little bit of money in the near future. And then, last but not least, I wanted another striker. And I've never used him before. A lot of people like him. Matthias Sukar from last, which is Linzer Athletic Sport Club. That's Austrian, isn't it? They always play against Salzburg. But another striker, good finishing, good first touch, nice passing for the short passing in around the box with the shadow striker and the additional striker. Good physicals, nice work rate, good flair and composure. He, he hasn't done as well as I thought he was. 12 goals, 6 assists in 34 games is not really what I wanted. Fiat Arp has absolutely smashed him out of the water. We look at the tactic. This is what we go in. Barrero and Ludovic Reese, who obviously was already at the club in the middle. They'll see Grimmel and then Schlonlau at the back. And obviously Sucker and Arp up front, who have already got nice links with Molinas to really form that front three. But not exactly what I was expecting, to be honest with you. Not as well as I thought we would. Knocked out in the second round of the Pokal again, this time to FC Colm. And a nice fourth place finish. Have we got some decent results here? We must have beat some decent, decent teams. We know 4-2 against Colm in that game was very disappointing. We lost 4-1 against Wolfsburg. 4-1 against Leipzig. Oh, there's no big results here for us. There's a 3 lane against Mainz. It's nice to see. I mean, we must have beaten somebody here. Dortmund, we beat two goals to one. 4 1 originally as well, which is nice to see. A big, big result there. But it is important we beat these teams that are above in the league. So to not beat Leipzig is rather disappointing. But we are getting closer. We are still. I think this formation is not good for runs. You're getting some decent results. And obviously, Nuremberg, Augsburg, you should be beating them too, to be honest with you. If you're up and forth, you should be beating them too comfortably. As we look at the Bundesliga, let's have a look at the goals. We have Fiat Arp, joint third with 17. Molinas in with 15 is eighth. And then Sukkar is right at the bottom there, joint 16th. So we have players in and around. We have Melanus in seventh. Gremel, obviously the defender, in 11th. We have players in and around where we want to be. Is the upper echelon being Wagnerberg there with the assists. Eight in total. Not as many as we've seen last season, but he is still getting the job done. It'd be interesting to see how this goes forward. I mean, I'm finding it very difficult to recruit players. And with the additional challenge of the uh, Champions League competition, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But with that, let's get stuck straight into the next season, which is season four. And I don't know, honestly, I don't know how we're going to do the Champions League. So this will be a surprise for me as well. So <laughs> this has not got a plan. We appear to have been sacked, which isn't isn't what I wanted to happen, was it? Let's have a quick look and get ourselves to the Bundesliga. And see what has gone on. I don't know. I don't know how we've been sacked. Hamburg in 11th. So they are well below where they should have been last season. 
But let's have a look at what time we got sacked. It's staff, or history, managers. We well, got sacked in the March 2025. In March, we got sacked. So, I mean, yeah. We've had a horrible month there. Horrible season there. Four nil losses there. Constant draws, but the Champions League, we had Man United, Olympiacos, and Napoli. The only team which we've beaten there really is Olympiacos, which on the first attempt, we did beat them three goals to one. And obviously, a one-nil loss away from home and then got smashed both other times. Ah, not the season we want to see, was it? I mean, if you look at the transfers that brought in, there's a lot of movement. We have a goalkeeper went, Daniel Hauer, Fernandes went to Augsburg. Johansson, who wasn't really featuring anyway, went to Dragons in Sweden. And we brought in some decent players. Gabriel Stonina, 4.9 million pounds goalkeeper from Chicago. Got him in and he had two goalkeepers. So he came in as the backup that you'll see in the number one in a second. We have Fabriano Parisi, who went on the left to replace Nuremberg, who just he wasn't the quality I wanted really. And this guy came in. Good physicals. Yes, his crossing is better, but it looks like overall he wasn't a good decision, was he? Another centre back to replace Shlon Lau. Leo Costa, nice physicals. Amazing mentals and obviously tackling 14, passing 12, marking 12, heading 15. He knows what he's doing in and around that box. Slobodian Tedic, an additional striker came in because I wasn't convinced with Saka. He's got eight goals in 26 appearances. It's... May have messed this up myself, really. The goalkeeper I brought in to be the number one was Emil Odero. He's conceded 56 in 34. It's been a long year, hasn't it? I mean, are we even on the goals? I see Molinas there, down in 15th. But apart from that, oh, Fiat Arp has got 15 and 25. So, I think they've been harsh here. Fiat Arp there, 7.26 rating. I have been sacked for no reason, I don't think. Molinas joined 6th for assists with 8. I don't think they've done that bad. I think they've pretty over overachieved the season before, which has led to... 20 goals for here up and the competition he's listed as well they are trying to sell him as soon as that as soon as the other lad took over he put him on the transfer list which is ludicrous Tedic and Sakar up top by themselves with the leading goal scorer for the last two seasons not included in the game um i don't understand what they've done here i honestly don't understand what they have done how do they do it in the i mean they put knocked out again in the second round again 2-1 Oh, do you me? Well, that's not how I want it to end there. We had three very good seasons. One season where I think I was unlawfully sacked. I think we could have done better, given it another chance. But it is what it is. Thank you for watching, guys. Like, subscribe. I've been sacked. I can't believe it. See you next time.